what the revenue plan has provided us is something that is, it's not a marketing plan, it's not a sales plan, it's all encompassing. So within that, out comes a marketing plan. Within that, out comes a sales implementation plan. So what you've given us is the foundations in which we can now grow the business. And the plan's got the numbers in it, so it's got the metrics around how many leads, putting it in simple terms, how many leads do we need to generate from an our ideal client uh, profile or the database of our ideal clients to generate the revenue that we need over a three-year period across the four separate businesses that we've got. So the plan has nailed that. We've now got a much clearer idea on, on who our ideal client profile is, and that enables us to do a better job for those particular clients because we're focused on it and we become experts in dealing with those sorts of clients. And the third thing that came out of it was the detail around how we were going to make that happen. So, yeah, it's all very well we've got the numbers, but how are we going to find more ideal clients? Mm -hmm. How are we going to trouble the clients? How are we going to position ourselves in that category? Um, how are we going to build our credentials? So the steps now are for us to go ahead and implement that plan. What's quite interesting is when you first look at that implementation plan, it's a bit scary. Mm. There's an awful lot on it. A big takeout from this, which we haven't talked about so far, which probably for me is one of the key points, this really solidified our brand. So we, we were a successful company already. We knew what we did. We didn't really know how we were solving problems for clients. We didn't have that message behind the brand. So once we'd got that in place, which the tactics helped us with, it meant that we then realised we needed to rewrite everything that we'd ever written before in terms of our marketing and our collateral and everything. So we're, we're about 40% of the way through that, and that's a big task. In eight years, we've written a lot of white papers, we've published a lot of articles, so we really, we're really repositioning now the business. Once we've got that in place, that becomes a foundation for the next stage for us, which we see as um, definitely some more marketing automation. You know, it's, if you put it all together, it looks like a complex brain, mm. but if you start to take it apart and allocate it to the people that have the, the skill to do the various components, then it becomes a lot more manageable and everyone feels part of it. Right, I've now got context. I can go and implement a, a lead generation strategy knowing exactly how many leads I need to generate, who I'm targeting, and the message I need to take to them. The maturity of the brand has come through in this process. Uh, it's almost like a natural journey where we don't mind it's going to take a little bit longer because all of a sudden we feel more confident about who we are as a company. Do you think in general your expectations have been met? Yes, they have. Mm. Uh, I'll go back to why did we choose RPM? What was, what was the bit that got us to take that leap of faith? And that was, would we pay someone to provide us with a detailed financial plan? I don't mean P&L financials, mm. I mean revenue, leads, opportunities, uh, feeding all the way through to revenue, would I, would I pay someone to generate those numbers for me f to grow my business over the next three years? And the answer was yes. Have I got that? Yes. So therefore my expectations have been met. I think when you go about something like this, you realise that there is no destination. So when you, when you employ a company with a large sum of money to do what you've done for us, you think there's some kind of framework and if there's a beginning and an end, but there mm. isn't. Uh, and that's almost the value of the whole thing because you're saying to yourself, well, you know, th there's other investments we're going to have to make in the future, but they're more informed investments because we've now, you know, solidified our brand. We've got our, you know, everything matched to where our revenue is heading. We've got all the metrics in place and the investment points become very obvious for us. So there is no end to this journey. Would you recommend the RPM process to others? Yes, I would. I think it is important that the organisation that gets engaged that the sponsor in the organisation has the ability to make change in that organisation. Mm. If you don't have the ability to make change in that organisation, then you're going to struggle because what can come out of this may be an evolution, but it could be a revolution for that organisation. And if it's a revolution, the leader or the sponsor needs to have the power to follow through on that revolution. If you're going through that process and you are the sponsor or the leader, be ready for change. So. Don't do the process if you don't want to change because you're wasting your money.